Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. I've had a busy time recently and I've been doing stuff both down on the um, down at ground level and up in space. So uh, we'll touch on that in a moment. The first thing I've been doing, as you can as you can sort of see here, is, uh, as I'm heading out heading out further into the wilderness, is I've been extending the borders out a little bit because. Um, well, various reasons that I'll get onto in, in a little while. So I've been doing the normal thing up here. I've, I've slapped down a um, an outpost station, uh, which automatically summons train with all of the uh, resources it needs. Although for some reason we seem to be short of wood up here, which is um, interesting. That's not something I normally run out of. But I imagine that should mean there'll be a, um, a train along. Yes, here it comes now. So it's still two kilometres away, but it'll get there eventually. So in, in order to finish this off, I need to put down a couple more of the uh, roboports. So I'm just going to do that before I get on to explaining everything, talking about everything else I've been doing. Um, and this, that means the robots will then come out and they'll do all of the rest of the construction for me, basically putting in all of these walls. So I've come along here putting in the um, the sort of the, the basic essentials, the things like the uh, the turrets, which you absolutely need for a, <laughs> for an outpost, because without turrets, where would it, what would it, what would it even be there for? Um, and then I'm letting the uh, the robots do the the boring drudgery of filling in the um, fill, filling in the all the gaps that are left uh, with the uh, with the walls on on the outside of it. And I could do that myself to an extent. I could grab a load of walls out of the trains as it, as it, when it gets up here and, and 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 help a little bit. In fact, let's 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 do that just to speed things up a bit. Because if I leave it to, if I leave it to the assembly uh, the um, bots up here, they've got a long way to carry all of the stuff, so it'll take them a long time. So if I now fly all the way back over here to the end of it, and this is, I have to admit, this is a rather longer wall than I ideally want to have in my, um, when I'm, when I'm setting this sort of, setting this sort of outpost up, and it goes all the way across here, but I was looking around and I'm, I'm starting to run out of, um, choke points to an extent, and maybe I could have come up here and put a wall across there and that's slightly shorter, but the amount of extra time it would have taken me to battle through all of these biters, it just, it just didn't seem to be worth it. Conveniently, I did notice that um, this bit round here is, is a peninsula, so I didn't need, didn't need to build anything across here. And then I'm planning to build across here, um, across here somewhere, maybe maybe vertically down here. Then probably have to be across here by the looks of it. I mean, I, I could go even further down and then round here, um, but that's just going to be claiming so much territory; it'll just take forever. But maybe that's maybe that's a plan for the future. Um, and then yes, it's so around here. And the, the reason I started doing this um, was because I realised I was starting to run out of copper. All of my copper mines seem to be um, empty. So doing this, I've, I've captured this 4 million, power, 4 million copper um, space here, or at least I will have once I finish clearing up inside the area I'm going to claim. There's a 10 million over here, and so on. Um, but while I was exploring, I did come across something rather alarming. If I zoom out a bit, it's these curved areas you can see here these are the edges of the planet so in space exploration instead of having an infinite universe like you do in in vanilla there are actual limits to how far out you can explore so this will eventually be a circle about presumably this big and then that will literally be all of Norvis uh, now as you can see I, as far as building space goes that's absolutely fine I mean my, my actual factory itself only takes up this sort of area in the middle so it's not particularly huge but when you need to start going out further and further to find ore patches to uh, for resources then it's going to it's going to make it a bit more of a struggle that's a stone patch and especially the copper there's there's a sort of few five or ten million copper patches around there's another ten so there, there, it does exist but it's going to mean a lot more clearing out of the biters in order to get to them I suspect so I'm starting to suffer from that again but you know it, it's coming along okay I'm um, gradually getting there the biters are being gradually pushed back but that's not why you're here you're not here to see what I've been doing in it that could, that could just as well be vanilla um, so up in space in the last episode, I was talking about this um, big drop-off area up here. I think probably talking about it in the previous episode as well. And as you can see, it's starting to fill up. We've got vulcanite, we've got beryllium, cryonite, and ice coming in here. So that's um, that's Ganymede and Frost delivering their products as they should. They're getting loaded into the trains, and the ones that are needed around here are also getting passed down a little bit further. And down here, we're making all of the liquids I need. And I think I talked about this last time. So this is my, maybe a little bit of a sort of a, a refresher. So we've got, we're making up the, um, doing the oil processing here. Yes, this is the oil liquefaction, uh, coal liquefaction to make the oils. Um, 
and as you can see we're getting through these at quite a rate because we're then turning them into the uh, the lighter versions and turning those into lube uh, orange goo what's that cosmic gel i think and the thermofluid oh and and the cosmic water in here as well and these are all getting passed up and put into these trains so i can take them off to around the factory to where they're needed and one of the places they're needed is up here and this is my new um memory card factory essentially so what we've got going on here is we've got a couple of stations that are cause doing the drop off so this station here is linked up to is pulls in trains carrying all of the sort of the basic materials all of the, sort of the solids I suppose essentially and then here we've got as you can see we've got a copper unloader and a red circuit unloader and those are dropping onto this belt that goes up here to this machine which will then make them into memory cards um, then we've got this station which is uh, unloading uh, this one's just getting the cosmic water by the looks of it Oh, and the um, and the thermofluid. Is that the same train? Yes, I think it is. So thermo the thermofluid, which is required for keeping things cool, and the cosmic water are being unloaded here. So we fill these tanks up, and then once once they start to empty to a certain extent, we've got these um, these uh, combinators that are saying if it get if it gets down to less than ten thousand, essentially call another train. So what I've done, this is similar to the way I was doing it with the rockets. You've got you have negative numbers for what you actually want to make sure, absolutely sure you've got, and then this this um, combinator here says if anything is less than zero output a green then this station says the train limit is set to green so if the if, if that when that goes to one because there's anything required by the station the train limit here will go up to one and the train will be called and then it'll it'll unload all the stuff that's needed and that can, and that can start to flow around we've also got this one here this is unloaded this is going to be um, a, sort of a disposal train so this one's going to pick up the um, contaminated cosmic water and the um, and, and the scrap that's being collected here and the reason I've got these to worry about now is because I've discovered that there um, one of the things I've, I've started to learn is that there are more efficient recipes for a lot of things so for example here let's, in fact, let's look in FNEI this is um, this is making the polished data storage substrate so you can do that the way I've been doing it before which is where you take a rough data substrate and then polish it with the chemical gel and that produces a polished data substrate um, and that's that's great that works that's what i've been doing up until now but a bit more efficient is to use cosmic water on it and then that will produce again the same polished data substrate and in both cases it's a one-to-one -one, but it also produces scrap and five five contaminated cosmic water uh, tiny amounts of scrap but, but some nonetheless and so this this one is it, i can then send off to be recycled somewhere and that will turn it back into uh, most of it will be turned into cosmic water and we'll get a little bit of sludge around so essentially this makes the whole system much much more efficient so instead of get, instead of churning through as much of the liquids as i was before it'll, it'll all get recycled and that means bringing up a lot less ice water in the form of ice it means bringing up less coal to then be turned into um into, into the gases in order to be turned into the in order to be turned into either one of these two so essentially it's going to make things a lot more efficient in the in the resources especially on the coal side so that was something <laughs> someone suggested in the comments and yeah they were quite right it's a bit more complicated because i'm going to need to have this shipped off to some sort of recycling facility and that is something that i haven't built up yet it also means that we're going to be spitting out loads of um well tiny amounts of scrap as you can see i've got 12 in here after having made presumably a very large number of, of um, memory cards which are shipped down to one of these here we go made 150 memory cards it's produced 12 scrap um no more than that 336 um, memory cards and it's produced 12 scrap so you see it's not it's not producing particularly large quantities of it but it is going to be a thing that needs to be dealt with appropriately i've also got the uh, chillers up here that are, that are producing the um the, the colder thermofluid that I'm going to be using in these supercomputers and these are the ones that are going to be recycling the uh, the memory cards so I'm going to ship them into here as well um, because I want to keep all, all of the memory card stuff in the same place so I'll bring in the memory cards they'll get formatted here by these machines and then dropped out onto this belt linked up with the um, the ones that are being made somewhere oh yes linked up here uh Oh right, yes. So they come around here. Then this one will put them in if, if there's if there's space, and then they'll get passed around. So so the priority will be the reformatted ones, but we'll make new ones if, if required to keep the uh, to keep the the belt full. And hopefully that will uh, keep things ticking over nicely. So I'm going to need to have a filter on the input here that's going to sort out the um, 
the, the, so when I bring all the memory cards back, it'll sort out the ones that are already blank and, and okay to use again, and the ones that need to be reformatted. And then down here, as you can see, I've got a, a splitter that's splitting out the broken memory cards, the ones that couldn't be reformatted properly. And they're being going to be fed into this recycling machine here that will produce more scrap, and that's just being dumped onto this belt down here so it can be filtered out and put into these scrap containers. So one of the things I need to do is to build up a recycling plant somewhere. Um, I'm thinking I'll probably put that down maybe down here but wherever it is I do put it it's going to need to do the turning the scrap back into ore then cooking the scrap into sorry cooking the ore back into metals again and then somehow we're going to need to feed them up here and put them back into this system so they just get passed around again and everything ends up where it should do so uh, whether I have another train bringing stuff into here that needs to be dropped off in this area I'm not sure I haven't really decided yet we'll have to see how that goes and, and whether I want to just run long belts up here or not because what I could do is I could have a train here and then just have um, a series of splitters filtering out all of the things that are, get, that are getting brought back in on, along here. That might be quite nice as a sort of a way, somewhere where I can just dump stuff and have it go back into the, into the system. As you can see, this whole area is powered by these um, new advanced solar panels I've got um, up in here. And they produce loads and loads of power, so we're absolutely fine for, fine for power up here. Admittedly, none of this is running. When it kicks in, we may need to, I may need to rethink this a bit and put some more in. So one of the things, as you, as you may have noticed, this isn't running, and that's because we've run out of these um, rough data substrates. So those are getting f fed up along this belt here, which comes from this rocket here. So if we have another quick look at Norvis, um, all the way back over wherever it is. I need to bookmark some places now, that's the thing. Okay, let's bookmark here. Okay, so what I've done over here is I've repurposed this, this rocket here is now set to take the, um, the substrates up. So at some point, I don't actually. I don't know why this isn't launching. Uh, there's no. It's not launched on green signal. My cargo's full, and I don't seem to have programmed it up properly. What it what it probably is is that I've not yet configured the um, the Norvis uh, orbit space station to feed that particular to, to say that I need more of those to be coming up as well. So let's do that if I can remember where it is. Now oh, there's the transmitter, and there's the thingy. Uh, was I putting these in a particular order? I probably was, never mind. So this is the rough data substrates, minus a thousand. Okay, so that should summon in a rocket, and then all of this will kick off again, and we'll get loads of loads, loads of those circuits coming through. So I, might, I don't need them urgently yet, but that's something I need to do. So yes, I've got my uh, space trains all running happily. They're taking the appropriate things around. This does all seem to be working, which is... Uh, which is nice. I'm <laughs> very happy to see it does, does seem to be uh, ticking over uh, as it should. So that's the mem memory cards. The next thing I wanted, the next thing I started thinking about is mirrors. So the um, there's a couple of a couple of notes here. Let's find out mirrors. These things. This is another one of those things where there's multiple ways to make it. So I can either use heat shielding loaders, all all of these things in relatively large quantities. Or I can use them in smaller quantities. So see, the, the, uh, the glass has got down to three. We've got the same number of low density structures. We lose the heat shielding. We lose all of the iron. We've halved the lube, but we do now need irid iridium and a bit more chemical gel. So it's a similar recipe, but it's a bit more efficient. It produces them in in um, with 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 fewer inputs. Although it does produce more scrap, but you know, never mind. So this is the, I'm going to start using this recipe, and there are a lot of things that use the um, the mirrors. So for for the, for the level two um, uh, sciences, this, this uh, one of the things is you need X-ray you need I think X-ray observation frames, and now those take a mirror for every well every twelve of them you make. So there's another draw on it there, and the polarization data now requires mirrors as well. So I want to have a decent supply of those running, as well as for things like solar panels and making the telescopes of various types as well. So there's a number of things I'm going to need those for. So I want to have a central place that's just producing them in bulk, and I can then have them shipped out to wherever they're needed so that's another thing another thing that I need to do the problem the big problem with this is both recipes require low density structures I don't have those up in space yet um, I mean I, I do over here they're being brought up in, in the old rocket in, in relatively small quantities but what I mean is for the whole new better system that I've got going on here we're not making a, we're not bringing up low density structures so I started thinking about this on back down on Norvis, and yeah, I have a, a, a bit of a factory somewhere in here that is is, is churning out low density structures. Here it is. So it's making them at um, at a rate, uh, and this is using the old the old expensive recipe as well as you can see if I zoom in a bit. Although I don't. Um, so we're 
we don't... Oh yeah, so that's another... Am I right about that? Low density structures, are there two recipes for that? Oh yes, right, never mind. So, there are two recipes for low density structures as well. So there's the glass, copper, steel, plastic one that, I've been, that I'm using here and have been for ages. Then there's this one which takes aeroframe scaffolds, but unfortunately in order to get that I need tier 2 blue science and I haven't got that yet, so I'm having to stick with the old one. However, this isn't really going to be enough to keep a rocket satisfied. Uh, so what I've done is, I've, if I, is I've, I've now decided it's time to make a separate facility for making the low density structures. And that's this one down here. So I messed around with the uh, creative mod for a little while. And this is actually done, I did this on uh, live on the stream um, back on the, what was it, the 8th I think. Uh, and so this, this I, I built up this facility down here and what we've got essentially is these um, assembly machines that are being fed all of the resources that, the, that could, could possibly be required um, and then turn, and are turning them into low density structures that are being fed out at a, a gradual dribble. So the way um, my original design for this wasn't using wasn't using the beacons. So there were about I think about five times as many um, assembly machines in here, spreading out all the way across to about here, and they were still only taking in about one uh, yellow belt of each well one half yellow belt, of, no one actual yellow belt of each resource. Um, but they were they were all chock full of the uh, productivity modules, so I was producing as much as I possibly could with that with that level of input. Um, with the beacons, I can now I redesigned the whole thing a bit to put the, the uh, beacons in the middle and to try and get it as efficient as possible. So as you can see, this one is affecting all eight of those assembly machines around it, and this one's getting the next eight and so on. And this means I can then run them with the, um, the four blue, four speed modules and the four efficiency modules. That means that they run a, a bit quicker, meaning I don't need to have anything like as many of them, and it drastically reduces the amount of power they use. So this one uh, is running at is running at normal speed, so the the blue mod the blue speed modules are offsetting the the slowdown from the productivity modules, and but we're still getting the plus 32 percent productivity, and then the efficiency modules are then pulling the um, power usage down to a mere plus 280 percent, so they're still using almost four times the amount of power they normally would, but that's still a lot better than not having those there and having to use massive massive quantities of them. Now the reason there's so many, even though we're only using about one and a half beacons worth is because I intend at some point to come in and, and uh, upgrade all of these belts to blue belts and that'll mean I'll get three times the input flowing in and therefore I'll have a bit more um, output coming through as well. Uh, three, time three times the output in fact and this has been running for quite a long time now and it's still only got up to about 15,000 low density structures so this is a slow slow process. Um, now low density structures are well as the name suggests they only stack up to 50 so this this station is getting close to being well not that close to being full it's about a third full um so it shouldn't take too many quite as many as it would with other things in order to fill up the rocket but it's still going to be a massive drain on this on this and all the resources and to, to, to get the uh, the rocket up and going as you can see there's more more glass being dropped off there and speaking of glass that was another thing i had to um had to boost the uh the inputs of so i had a bit, a bit more fun with um with the creative mod as I to design this up. So as you, you hopefully remember, over here I've got my, the vulcanite based smelting systems where we're pulling in all of the ores um, and the vulcanite and then turning it into whatever whatever we need. Down here I've, I've now added in an extra set of these for glass. So we've got about... Are these, are these actually fast enough? I can't tell. Oh yeah, they are just about. So we've got enough stone pouring in here just about that we're now outputting I think two, yes, two blue, blue, two blue belts worth of glass um, straight into the station here, where it's all getting loaded into the um, into into the chest. It's normal, and this and this is now producing it at a at a much nicer rate than uh, than I was before. As you, as you can tell, the um, everything here is is fully productivity moduled up, and I've managed to squeeze everything being uh, being moduled by the beacons as well. And so with with the ones up here in the in the middle, that's getting these ones, and then this one down here is getting the um, pulverizer and the uh, what do you call it? The furnace is just below it. So yeah, that's that's working nicely and pulling huge amounts of um, <laughs> pulling huge amounts of glass through. Uh, so at the moment, that is 
it is a plentiful supply of that. The problem I'm having at the moment, actually, is with um, and the reason I started going off and doing all that extra exploration is I seem to be running short of copper. So we're actually okay at the moment, as you can see. It's we've just had a train drop some off, I imagine. But looking at this, you can see all the gaps in in um, in the feeds coming out here because it was we we had a bit of a gap. This should be a, a steady. This these belts should be completely full as long as there's enough input. <coughs> So that's why I was going out exploring and trying to find more copper. Uh, the problem is, is simply that the, just, just is the amount of it that's available on this planet. I guess um, I'm happy to go out further and further to find patches, patches of it, and, and set the mines up. So at some point, I might need to think about getting copper from somewhere else, like from another planet. But that sounds like quite a big job. Okay, so as I was saying, that's the uh, that's that and that. I, I made a list of things I, things things to talk about because it's been a little while since I've made one of these videos. One of the other issues I'm having is uh, is a supply of blue um, circuits, and I think that is at least partly linked to the copper shortage. So let's see, this is this is where I'm making them. Oh no, it's got it's got enough copper at the moment. The the main problem is just that you can put in six belts, six solid belts of copper, and you get out this tiny trickle of, of blue circuits on the other side because they're just so so expensive. There, uh, I have. I've been having a few thoughts around this. So, this is a two-parter. <laughs> um, no, they're not called blue circuits. They're called processing units. So, one thing I could do, because there's so many different tiers of stuff that go into this. There's the you've got the wires that go into the green circuits and into the red circuits, and the green and red, and then green circuits that go into the red circuits, and then you've got green and red circuits that go into the blue circuits. So that's just asking to be um, productivity moduled all the way through. So I, I think one of the things I want to do is, is redesign my blue circuit production to be using the um, productivity modules and also the, the beacons to get the, keep the speed and the energy usage to sensible levels. Um, but the other thing is there's also an additional um, recipe for producing blue circuits. And this uses Holmium, which is something I, I do have now. I mean, this, this is something I could start doing. I don't have Holmium on Norvis at the moment, though, so there's a, a little bit of a downside there. But I think it shouldn't be too difficult to then to produce some sort of system that will you that will essentially to make make the uh, the blue circuits from um, including Holmium cable as well, and that will make them. I think it's quite, it's quite a lot more efficient, isn't it? So instead of yeah, it halves the number of other circuits you need and the amount of acid, although that acid's cheap, I don't care too much about that and doesn't use very much of it, in exchange for the four Holmium cables, which is plastic and Holmium. So that's going to be a significant saving uh, on, on making those. Um, and it's going to make, yeah, it's going to make everything a lot easier. I wonder if this is extra recipes for... No, there isn't, there isn't an extra recipe for that one, and, and no. Okay, so there aren't extra recipes for uh, red and green circuits. It's just, it's just the blue ones. But that does make me wonder, actually. Let's see. Could I start making my um, blue circuits here on Henki Sesui and then shipping them back to Norvis as circuits? Are we? Do we have all of the ingredients that I need for that? So we have copper coming in. We have stone. We have holmium. We have iron. Do we need? Do we even need iron? I don't think so. Um, it's basically copper and holmium. Um, and plastic. How am I making plastic here? From oil. Okay, so there is oil as well. I think I might build some kind of massive processing unit building facility out here on this planet, and then ship them by and ship the the blue circuits by rocket to wherever they're needed. That seems like a good way to do it, actually. Yeah. Wish I thought of that sooner um, before I started trying to load up a rocket back down on Norfis. <laughs> uh, never mind. But yeah, this, that, that's something I think I want to do. So I'm going to I'm going to put that in my um, in my to-do list. Um, however, that's spelt. Uh, let's move that up to the top of the list as well, because that sounds like that sounds like a fun thing to get to be getting on with. I can also come up here and then upgrade this to be exporting holmium by rocket as well. So I'm going to need to do some big upgrading on this planet of the of all the all all the um, processing facilities. But I do have it coming in by train, which is an important an important first step of it. Okay, that's that sounds like an interesting idea. I'm 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 looking forward to trying that now. <laughs> 
Um, and that also brings me pretty much to the end of my end of my list of things to talk about. So that's what I've been getting on with. The um, the exciting part, as far as I'm concerned, is is what's going on in in, in orbit here on the on the space station. But I do keep ending up yak shaving, going off and doing other things like this blue circuit production I've just started talking about, and the um, the low density circuit production that was supposed to be building up for making the mirrors and things up here, but hasn't I haven't quite got there yet. So it's it's a process, should we say? Um, I, every time, I, every time I decide on something I want to do, that I find four or five other things I need to do first, which slows things, slows it down a bit. But never mind, I'm sure I can, uh, I'm sure I can deal with that. Okay, so I've got things to do now. Um, thank you for watching. I'm going to go, go away and uh, start getting on with those. I shall uh, see you in the next episode. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you then.